Hi everyone, and welcome to this video series on how to install and configure Solar Management Hub, the latest offering sold by Centurion Solar. So when you open up SMH for the first time, you will see that the dashboard is going to look like this. Uh, to configure it or start configuring it, you can simply click on the settings tab. Note that you cannot click anywhere. This is because the system was designed with accountability and security as its base shell. So the first thing you need to do is to log on to the system. In this instance, I'm going to be the installer and I'm going to log in with my installer password. Right, so when, I, when that's done, the system is now available for configuration. So the first thing we need to do is to select the inverter we have. In this uh, test little setup I have here, I've got an Expert Max single. It doesn't have an awful lot of PV on it, so I'm just going to leave it at 700 watts in total. The inverter settings and, in, and uh, um, schedule, those will be covered in different videos because uh, they are quite involved. Then we can also go to the fault alerting. SMH supports the entire host of alerts that is offered by the specific inverter in question. You can see on the expert max they are quite a lot and they also have sub areas which is primarily used for things like the uh, parallel settings, ATB and CAN bus failure and those kinds of things. So you can configure which of those to go to telegram or email as well as which of those will only come up as a notification on SMH upon logging in. If you are the installer, you can also decide which of those um, uh, warnings or areas needs to be logged into the log itself, into the database. If you are a, a normal user, you will not have this column, so you can't, cannot turn off things from logging into the database. Uh, again, this is with security as well as accountability built in mind. Right, I'll close this up. At the bottom here, we've got the alerting portion. So this is where you can basically type in your email address, um, username, password, everything else. Uh, those are all encrypted multiple times. So it's very, very, very secure. Then we also have the Telegram bot and the Telegram ID that you can use. And those are also used for real-time communication to your system together with a test button that will basically uh, just make sure that you did everything correct. Right in the top right side hand corner, we've got the battery monitoring type. So SMH supports a host of different ones. Uh, the first one being none, which is inverter control. So this means that your inverter will determine the state of charge based on voltage. Then we also have none SMH control. Know that this is a beta version at the moment. So what this does is it basically checks when the battery is full or 100%. It gets a set point and then it starts doing Coulomb counting to get your know, work out mathematically what the state of charge is. Way more um, advanced and way more accurate than the inverter control, but this does rely on the fact that the battery needs to reach 100% state of charge every day. In a scenario where the battery does not reach 100%, the system will not get a set point to start counting from, and then obviously the, the SOC starts drifting from there. So hence this is still in beta. We also support the BMV battery monitor, which is exactly the same as we have on the, on the SMH control. The only difference is the BMV does all of this with hardware and not only software. Then we've got the Pylon Tech BMS, which is one that everybody has been using for ages, as well as the Averge BMS, which is also uses the PACE BMS. Uh, so Averge, Hubble, etc. they all use the, the, the PACE BMS. In this little test setup, I have the Pylon Tech BMS, so I'm going to select that. Then I only have one battery selected here or connected here, and it's a 75 amp hour battery. I also would like to see how much time do I have to run this battery until it gets to 20%. So because we have the, the, the BMS that we can talk to directly, and we know what the battery inefficiency is, in this case 40%, which is about standard for most lithium batteries, uh, I can then calculate that based on whichever load I'm experiencing, how much time do I have before the battery reaches this X percentage, which in this case is 20%. So that, that's quite a nice feature when, uh, when you're running in a scenario where there's load shedding and you need to um, prolong the longevity of the batteries, you can simply see, uh, come ahead and look to see how much power is left in the battery and you can start turning devices off in your house in order for the batteries to last longer. At the right here, we've got the maximum charge watts and discharge watts. These don't do anything specifically, except um, they set the gauge on the dashboard to say it'll go from 5,000 to minus 5,000 watts. So it's not a, not a setting as such, it just draws the help to draw the gauge. Then there's also a cloud portion. This will come pre-configured on your system by Centurion Solar at the time that you uh, take the system out of the box. And this will be where your data is stored on, on the Centurion Solar Cloud Portal. So there's nothing to be configured yet. It will be done for you up front. 
Moving to the left hand side of the screen, here we can see we can give each system a name. So every, every installer would like to give your system a, a different name. You're welcome to do that. Uh, some of the installers also give their system not only a name, but also a telephone number. So when an alert comes through, it will use this name. So for instance, I can make the system Mike system and I can give him a telephone number. And uh, that's quite an easy way for me to say if there is a problem on the system, I can immediately call my customer the moment that there's an issue. You can, you can even uh, go and give it just a name, Mike Solar. It doesn't really matter whatever makes sense to your setup, whether it be a personal setup or an installer setup. Then we can also see the rest of the licensing information. This is the system identification. This is what, what you will need to provide us when you do your subscription. So this is how we know what your Pi is, and then obviously tie this into the subscription of your system. On the right hand side here, we only have the handler. So I'll be going into more details on the handlers shortly, um, but this is where we can stop and start the handlers. And then the last thing we need to do before we can enable the system is then to specify that all handlers should start automatically. Right, so with that, I'm gonna save all of those settings. Settings saved and I'm gonna start the handlers. There we go. You will see that once this is all done, the command status will say it's idle. The user that's, that's logged in is installer and there's no mode for it at the moment. If I go to the dashboard portion, you'll see that we've started talking to the batteries now and we are in fact in grid mode and we are still user is still installer and the command status is idle. And with that, all of the settings will now start pulling through. So this battery is only at 29% SOC. We are pulling in 1,100 watts at the moment. Um, 800 watts is, is being pulled from the grid and 200 watts of that is coming from the PV. So this is standard stuff. One of the things you need to see here as well is that everything in SMH does have a tooltip with it. So if you don't know what something does, simply hover over it. There will be a description and then below that, if there's any mathematical equation for that, you'll see what that math was to, you, to get to that specific figure. So um, it's fairly nice and easy to follow along and you're welcome to do that if you need anything. Right, so with that, I'm gonna stop this for the moment and this will get you going on SMH just to get the basic configuration up and running.